what was the uh, file formats you have used in the DataTix? So in the DataTix, I used uh, mostly the Parquet and uh, JSON related files uh, and the Delta tables. So the Delta tables relay on the uh, Parquet files. And uh, apart from that, I do have experience working with the uh, CSV files, Avro files, and uh, text-based files like you know different uh, uh, delimiters like byte delimiter, comma delimited, and uh, pixel width characters. So I do have experience with all other uh, uh, file format. And uh, what what was the language uh, it was used for the? So uh, coming to the language, I'm using the Scala and the uh, Python. So I'm comfortable with uh, both the language. Coming to the Spark data frame APIs and SQLs. And uh, coming to pure programming language, I'm uh, good with the Python. And uh, any idea about Python uh, scripting? Yes, as I said, I'm good with the Python uh, programming language. So I, I know the Python scripting. So I'm comfortable writing in the Python uh, scripting. So uh, I mean, uh, with respect to development, how, how much work you have done in the Python side? Uh, yeah, on the Python side, uh, we do can uh, develop the uh, business functionalities using the data frame APIs or if it required, we do can uh, code in the plain uh, Python code like in terms of the scripting and uh, for the automation tasks and all, we'll use the Python heavily, especially my uh, data sources also include some sort of the APIs. So to, uh, to read the data from the APIs, we'll use the Python uh, code heavily. Uh, here so on the day-to-day -day life basis uh we'll use like you know uh 20 to 30 percent of the time that we spend on the python uh, for coding and then uh debugging and uh, uh testing and all the purpose yeah okay and uh, how was the source uh, volume how big it was uh, so coming to the volume of the data so usually we deal up with some uh, terabytes of the data so uh, my volume would be uh, around for daily uh, it will come around like you know uh, 200 to 300 uh, uh, gb of the data that again depends on the uh, you know uh, data data volume that uh, definitely varies day-to-day uh, -day basis uh, uh, so we we have a multiple uh, sources are there so if we can come in like each source would come around like you know 50 to 60 gb if i can combine all overall so it will come around uh, uh, 300 to 400 GB of the data. Okay. And uh, can you explain me the uh, incremental load? Uh, sure. So incremental load is nothing but uh, uh, CDC load that is change data capture uh, mostly uh, like uh, like instead of loading the full uh, data from the source system to the target in the ETL pipeline, we'll try to load the data in incremental fashion. Uh, that is on everyday basis, what are all the change triggers that was happened from last fetched data, we'll take only that triggers and we'll take it out and we'll process through our data pipelines and we'll load it into the target. So this process is nothing but an incremental process. So the incremental process that runs on an everyday uh, basis, but the full load will run on once. That is a one-time load. So when we set up the initial pipeline on the initial uh, level, we'll run the history or a full load so that all the data from the uh, source system will be uh, consumed and will be processed and will be loaded to the target system so from there on we can take only the incremental data and we try to process okay and what is the difference between SCD type 1 type 2 So a CD type 1 is a kind of a overwrite mode. So it do not maintain any sort of the history. Uh, it will just overwrite the or update the information with the existing information. But in type 2, it maintains the full history. Like it can comes with the start date and end date and some current fact. So if any new change was happened to the existing record, we will try to insert a new record and we can uh, soft delete the existing record. So using this, uh, how we do the soft delete, it is we'll try to enter the end date as the current date and we can keep the current indicator as n that is nothing but we we are no, uh, that 
particular record is no longer be the active or current record so instead we can add another entry of the same record with the starting date as today and end date as some max end date and we can keep the current indicator flag as active so that when we query the data on the particular uh, record we can use the filter as like current uh, indicator record as y well, so that we can get only the latest record from the uh, scd type 2 and also it can maintain the historical uh, data so we do not lose the data in the scd type 2 whereas in scd type 1 we lose the historical historical data okay and uh, uh did you uh, had i mean what are the data tables uh, so delta tables are a, a type of a tables that are available in the data bricks uh, that is a part of a lake house uh, architecture so delta tables are a kind of a uh, open source uh, kind of a uh, table models uh, and the underline the delta tables the data will be stored as part of the parquet files and the metadata and uh, uh, the log kind of information will be stored under the json uh, files so uh, this Delta tables can support the acid uh, properties and it is acid uh, compilance. Uh, it, it can support the you know version uh, rollback like if you wanted to get the previous versions of the data like it, it basically it will support the time travel uh, feature. If you wanted to get the previous versions of the data we can go and we can uh, get the data based on the timestamp or based on the version as of now keywords. Uh, we can use it and uh, it do it, it is a kind of a file format that we can store the data and uh, can support us uh, as it kind of a properties so data tables uh, support which file format as i said delta table support the parquet file format the actual data will be stored in the parquet and the metadata or a kind of a change log that was happened over the uh, table will be stored under the json uh, log files okay and uh, do you uh, have i mean done any optimization on the data tables uh yes the optimization will uh, try to uh, you know we'll try to uh, partition the data based on the uh, date wise so whatever the date that we uh, wanted to fetch we can uh, use the filters as a date column so that we'll try we'll try to avoid the unnecessary scanning of all the partitions so that is one optimization that uh, we have enabled on the data tables and we can also perform the g ordering so z ordering is nothing but reorganize the data files by uh, sorting them based on the specific uh, columns so it also improve the uh, read performance for the queries uh, that we can uh, fire on the database and uh, along with that we do can run the vacuum command so vacuum commands are actually helpful to uh, release the you know uh, deleted data or soft deleted kind of a data uh, so that will actually remove from the uh, system and it will uh, release the physical uh, disk space so that actually helps you know uh, avoiding the rescanning of all the data and the other stuff okay yeah. and uh, can you uh, brief me like uh, for a scenario like uh, when we have in our data frame mm -hmm. uh, name club with first name and last name i wanted uh, the data frame to have first name and last name uh, separated what uh, what can be done in this case okay let me understand the scenario here so we have a data frame inside the data frame we have one co particular column so the column will be clubbed information of the first name and last name of the customer so now we wanted to divide this uh, one column into two different column with like first name as one column and second name as another column so this we can do it in spark data frames so inside the spark data frames we do have a split function so if you apply the split function on the name column based on the space so the first position 0th position we can consider it as a first name and first position we can consider it as a last name so this we can do it in the with column function of the data frame apis and uh, on, you said that uh, the end point is snowflakes so mm. how was the data uh, i mean now uh, from uh, ADF, uh, uh, ADF was bringing your source data, correct? Okay, so why did you use ADF? Why, why can't we directly read it from Databricks? 
ஸோ இன் இந்த ரெகுலர் இந்த இந்த ரெகுலர் யூஸ் கேசஸ் மோஸ்ட்லி த டேட்டா பிரேக்ஸ் மோஸ்ட்லி த டேட்டா பிரேக்ஸ் வீ கேன் டைரெக்ட்லி கனெக்டட் டு த ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் அண்ட் வீ கேன் லோட் த டேட்டா ஃப்ரம் டேட்டா பிரேக்ஸ் டு த ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் இன்ஸ்டெட் வாட் வீ ஆர் டூயிங் அவுட் ஹியர் ஸோ இன்ஸ்டெட் டைரெக்ட்லி லோடிங் ஃப்ரம் த டேட்டா பிரிக்ஸ் வி ஆர் ஆக்சுவலி டேக்கிங் த ஃபில்டர் டேட்டா ஃப்ரம் த டேட்டா பிரிக்ஸ் டு த டேட்டா ஃபேக்ட்ரி அண்ட் அகெயின் வி ஆர் டேக்கிங் த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டேட்டா செட் அண்ட் வீல் ட்ரை டு அப்ளை சம் சார்ட் ஆஃப் த ஜாயின்ஸ் ஹவர் தேர் ஸோ சின்ஸ் இட் இட் ஹேஸ் அ இன்வால்மெண்ட் வித் அ டேட்டா ஃபேக்ட்ரி வி ஆர் டைரெக்ட்லி லோடிங் ஃப்ரம் த டேட்டா ஃபேக்ட்ரி டு த ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் பட் இன் அதர் கேசஸ் வீ கேன் ஆல்சோ லோட் த டேட்டா ஃப்ரம் த டேட்டா பிரிக்ஸ் டு த ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் ஸோ அக்கார்டிங் டு திஸ் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் வீ சூஸ் டு கோ வித் த டேட்டா ஃபேக்ட்ரி டு லோட் இன் டு த ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் so uh, already sql is a uh, normal, normalization data and it's a normalized data so what transformation is required over here so yeah uh, as i said uh, my source system uh, data is a normalized format but we are loading it into the uh, data warehouse or lake house uh, architecture so there we are trying to convert into the dimensions and the fact tables so during the dimensions and fact tables we need to club into the multiple uh, tables into a single or we can uh, divide the multiple or uh, table center further based on their dimensions and the facts so in this process we need to do some sort of set transformations to get the actual facts and the actual dimensions we need to be separated and loaded to the facts and dimension tables but adf also supports uh, running these sql queries over there uh, yes uh, but adf was not uh, suitable for the complex and big uh, of a complex kind of a uh, transformation let's say if it is a data bricks we can able to easily write down uh, pyspar code to do some sort of a complex transformations and can able to convert this facts and dimension very easily compared to the adf area which is like a uh, gui and uh, it also comes with the co- functionality but it is more complicated to design the same uh, thing and also it is take it will take the uh long time to implement the same logic in the adf and also it it has a uh, demilits like you know when we deployed the same system to the production the maintenance was uh, so hard in the adf because if something was happen uh, if something went wrong we need to dig all the configurations and all the uh, configurations and all the components that is really tricky to uh, really tricky and uh, hard to understand the developer uh, developer or the support team so to make it the simple things we coded in the pyspark code so in the pyspark code it is uh, easily in single uh, in a simple line in few lines of apple we can meet the same uh, requirement so that's how we choose to go with the data uh, data bricks or uh, to do the complex kind of transformations so daily how many tables you are trying to load it uh so it depends on the uh, pipeline actually so we have built many pipelines uh, that consumes the different uh, sorts of the tables so that that depends on the pipeline and the use case and the business uh, requirement so in one of my requirement we have uh, uh, you know chosen like around 15 uh, around around uh, uh, 15 to 16 uh, kind of a uh, source tables uh, and also it includes some sort of a 5 to 6 different uh, flat files and uh, one api uh, as a data, data source that we need to be uh, ingested to the target system so there are total 15 pipelines no it's not like uh, 15 pipelines we have built only one pipeline for one different uh, uh, data source so let's say we have around uh, uh, 15 tables uh, the rdms kind of a tables so for all these tables we have defined we have uh, uh, created on pipeline and that pipeline will be configurable uh, based so the uh, parameterization has been uh in implemented so if you wanted to uh, load the data from one particular table right so we can give the configuration in such that uh, we need to give that table information so that the data pipeline will automatically uh, you know connect to that data source and will fetch the uh, required table data to the target location and what about the data structure uh, uh, the, the metadata would be different for each table so how did you handle that uh to manage the schema adf comes with the feature like a schema drift uh, so using the schema drift it can able to easily identify what are all the changes uh, happened in the metadata so these changes will be captured and be configured in such a way that we need to include the new schema changes and will be passed to the target systems so if there is any change in the source systems so we will be notified by the up, 
application themes or uh, upstream uh, teams so we'll do the changes in my target systems or even in my bronze silver layer uh, tables uh, also if without these changes if we run it obviously the pipeline will fail and it will be triggered uh, alerting uh, or mails uh, to my team so we will be taken care uh, upfront uh, to avoid these failures